I don't know what's worse, being the sort of madman who specializes in voiding your customer's warranties or enabling his reckless behavior the way that Noctua has done here. This small plastic spacer kit for their iconic brown coolers is not only 100% trust me bro guaranteed to get your RMA rejected by AMD, but it also increases the chance that something will go wrong. I mean, who in their right mind would take a cooler this size and bolt it directly to the fragile dyes that live under AMD's protective heat spreader? The 20 degrees? 20, de 20 degrees? 20 degrees low? That's impossible. Impossible to explain until I finish the segue to our sponsor. Nexigo, whether you're in need of webcams or accessories for your VR device, Nexigo has a great selection of products to choose from. You can learn more about them at the link in the video description. If it was anyone else, I'm not even sure if I would believe this. But after Noctua explained it, the whole thing kind of makes sense. And it starts with the creatively named Noctua NM AMB15 Offset AM5 Mounting Bars. You see, the thing is, when AMD designed their AM5 CPUs, they put the I.O. die in the middle, and they put the actual compute dies, the CCDs, down at the bottom of the IHS. This puts the hotspots of Ryzen 7000 CPUs in a very unconventional place. And you can see in Noctua's illustration here how this hurts the performance of a typical cooler. By having the hotspot down here, you can see we are overutilizing the heat pipes on this side and underutilizing the ones over here. That's where the offset bar comes into play. Watch this. By simply shifting the mounting mechanism seven millimeters downward, Noctua says they can drop the temperature on your CPU by up to three degrees. This is because of two effects. First, it concentrates the pressure over those heat generating dyes, improving thermal transfer. And second, it means more effective heat distribution throughout the base of the cooler. So you're making better use of all of your heat pipes rather than oversaturating some and underutilizing others. These results are really impressive and reinforce what we found in water cooling through the ages, where we saw that from generation to generation, the performance improvements were less about actually just building a better water block and more about tuning the water block better for modern processors. So while Ryzen 3000 and 5000 can benefit from this offset mount, it's not to the same degree pun intended, as Ryzen 7000, because those ones have much thinner IHSs. We'll be talking about that in a second. In typical Noctua fashion, it'll be available affordably for all their desktop class coolers going back to 2005. But, Linus, you might say, <laughs> up to three degrees is not almost 20 degrees. What's the deal with the rest of that? That is where this comes in. These small plastic spacers allow Noctua coolers to be mounted to delitted CPUs, and they're the result of a collaboration with their Bauer. I mean, it looks like the simplest thing in the world, a little piece of plastic. How could that drop you 15 degrees? Except the devil's in the details. Look how thick this is. Ah, so I haven't played around with delitted Ryzen 7000 yet but it seems that to maintain cooler compatibility with the lower profile LGA socket compared to their last generation pin CPUs, AMD made the IHS much thicker, which is contributing to some of the thermal challenges that users are seeing. The solution? Well, if you hate having a warranty, you can do this. Step one. Get your hands on a delitted Ryzen 7000 series processor. Given they developed the products collaboratively, Noctua recommends the one from Roman sold under the Thermal Grizzly brand. They've been doing a lot of that collab sort of stuff lately. Step two, install a direct die mounting frame like this one, again from Thermal Grizzly. This isn't strictly necessary, but it dramatically reduces the risk of accidentally cracking one of these delicate dies as you're tightening down your cooler. I wouldn't even consider mounting a cooler direct die these days without one of these frames. Next, you're gonna need some liquid metal thermal compound. Okay, you, you don't actually need it, 
But the issue is that the benefit of this modification with traditional thermal paste is very low, only about two to four degrees. This is because even though AMD's IHS is too thick, at least it's soldered. So it's pretty fast at moving heat from the hottest parts of the dyes. I mean, it's right in the name, right? It's a heat spreader. So if we use a traditional thermal compound right on these dyes, it can be somewhat overwhelmed by the concentration of these hotspots. Um, heat flux density is the term that Noctua used, but for all but the most technical of our viewers, that's unlikely to mean anything. So finally, you'll need Noctua's offset mount that I showed you guys before. Okay, you don't need it, but if you're gonna avoid your warranty, why settle for 10 to 17 degrees of improvement when you can have anywhere from 12 to 19? That is the cumulative benefit of all of these little changes. Though, now that your warranty is void, there are a couple of more things to consider. Die cracking, that's less of a concern thanks to the contact frame. But liquid metal on any one of these little surface mount components would be a big problem. So I would suggest some nail polish or conformal coating or some protective covering for the ones that aren't already covered. And here's the coolest part. Noctua isn't even forcing you to buy this spacer. If you get your direct eye contact frame and all this stuff from other companies, they will make literally nothing providing you the STL files of these spacers on printables.com, but they're doing it anyway. Then all you need to do is source slightly longer screws and they're gonna have the information about which screws you'll need on the printables page. Again, this works with the vast majority of Noctua coolers since 2005 and is launching at the end of July. But that doesn't mean that all cooling innovation is down to changing the position and voiding your CPU warranty. Meet the next gen NHD 15. It's got a whopping eight heat pipes now compared to six on the original, and that's just the beginning. The heat pipes are optimized for better performance, you know, optimizing wall thickness, wick structure, all that kind of stuff, but the big one is this fan. It's finally here after, what is this, eight long years of product development. Their new 140 millimeter fan. And thanks to its incredible performance, giving it up to three degrees better performance compared to their old one on a radiator, they were able to increase the surface area of the fin stack here by 20%, meaning that this should be good for anywhere in the neighborhood of about three to four degrees of improvement over the already legendary NHD 15. Now, of course, that's on a 300 watt heat load, so you better be running an Intel CPU. <laughs> Got him. Which is why Noctua actually doesn't recommend buying this if you have a 65 watt CPU. What they would recommend is that I do this segue to our sponsor. Thanks to SwitchPod for sponsoring this video. Are you a video creator looking to upgrade your on the go or vlogging setup? Look no further than SwitchPod. Compatible with any camera from a phone to a DSLR, this handheld tripod was designed by passionate video creators like us, just trying to make their lives a little easier. It's lightweight, compact, and nearly indestructible, so you can experience the freedom of quickly switching between handheld and tripod mode in seconds. Use the two threads on the legs to add accessories of your choice and turn the SwitchPod into a full-blown video rig. Head to the link below and check out SwitchPod today. If you enjoyed this video, what the hey, why don't you go check out our one on the development of the screwdriver, which uh, this actually reminds me a lot of because for better or for worse, I take a ton of inspiration from these guys, only shipping things once they are absolutely ready.